herpetic keratitis, what to look for. I'm going to give you some pearls and some tips on slit lamp examination of patients with herpetic keratitis. Now there are lots of different types, but don't worry, we're posting a new video every day and we're going to go into more detail each time we have more videos and focus on the different types of herpetic keratitis. Today, we're focusing on herpes simplex virus keratitis and disciform keratitis. So in disciform keratitis, you get endothelial and stromal inflammation. Here we can see some stromal scars in what looks like a round, disciform-like appearance where there's been previous areas of endothelial and stromal inflammation. If we look at the retroillumination, we can see that really moth-eaten appearance of the iris, that iris stromal atrophy superiorly there. And that's characteristic of hepatic infection. Now, putting in some fluorescein, we don't expect to see any epithelial involvement in disciform keratitis. Yes, there is perhaps a slightly reduced tear film breakup time, but not much else. This patient presented with a two-day history of a red, painful eye with reduced vision on the background of them having had multiple episodes. Now, these patients often do have recurrent disease. And one of the things that we can discuss maybe in later videos is the evidence behind acyclovir prophylaxis, where patients take acyclovir 400 milligrams twice a day as a long-term prophylaxis. So here we can see there is definitely AC inflammation, a good two plus of cells. Sometimes there might not be that much inflammation. And this patient also has raised intraocular pressure because they've got a trabeculitis, inflammation in the trabecular meshwork. So really the mainstay of treatment is topical steroids, IOP lowering therapy, and oral acyclovir treatment. Hope you found this video useful and we will be having similar videos where we can go through in more detail.